Welcome to my new video series, which is Working with Wonder. Wonder is the CDC's database system. I'm going to be sticking just to the death related stuff. Now, that's going to be more than just death. Uh, there will be population related stuff, and there may be a few other things that will come into play. Um, I'm just going to start out with the underlying cause of death database. Um, to get to this page, CDC Wonder, it's wonder.cdc.gov, we're going to go to the underlying cause of death. For this introductory video, all I'm going to do is show you how to get to the data. We're, I'm going to go to the most recent database, so that's going to be the ICD-10 underlying cause of death, which is there's one underlying cause of death for each death, so there is no double counting of deaths, etc. I'm going to show you how you get the count of deaths, the crude death rate, the age-adjusted death rate, and I'm going to use the default. I'll show you how to get other age-adjusted death rates in a future video, how to export the data, how to get that data into Excel, and then I'll do a quick graph of the data. Okay, so we're going to look at the 1999 to 2019 underlying cause of death. You have to agree to some stuff, and I'll just agree. We're not going to violate any rules. Okay, so when we're looking at our death data, generally we're interested in annual data. So I'm going to group results by year, and I'm not going to use any other grouping for this introductory video. And that's it. Uh, for all of your data draws, they're going to give you total number of deaths for whatever grouping that you ask for, the population for that grouping, and then the crude rate, which is the number of deaths divided by that population. Now, depending on what you're asking for, you can ask for other things, such as your confidence interval. I'm not going to explain <laughs> interpreting this in this video, but I will just pull all of these, then I'm going to do a title. You can see I've done this before because something pops up. And I'll just say this is my first query, which it's not, but we'll pretend. And then I'm going to click on Send. Okay, you'll see our query titles at the top. This is my first query. And we get a table. So you'll see that there's various columns. Uh, we can't do anything about the year. That's going to be all the way to the left. And um, you'll see it's in ascending order. We can't do anything about that. Now for deaths, we can do something about the order this is being shown in. We can resort that column. Um, so now I can have it with the largest number at top. So that obviously is going to be 2019. And you'll notice if I sort this, it goes from 2019 in consecutive order to 2011 and then to 2008. You might want to think about that. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's the deaths, but uh, I actually want to go back to the sorting by year. Okay, and you'll see that the what I'm sorting by, the arrow turns red. Okay, so it's going to be increasing year. I have my population crude rate. And you'll see the 95% confidence interval is below, and the rate is per 100,000. Um, there's a standard error, and you could actually get that from the confidence interval. Uh, and then I have an age-adjusted rate per 100,000. Doesn't really quite match up with the crude rate. Um, you'll see the year that it's closest is actually 2003, but there's no year that it actually exactly matches. And we can investigate why that is another time. Um, and if you, you know, go down, you'll see all sorts of notes below. Uh, and it's good, and it'll have a citation if you use this, query criteria if you need to replicate it. So what if I wanted to take this information out of here? And you'll see there's these various tabs, map chart, about all this other stuff. In general, I never use this. When I've actually looked at it, it doesn't behave nicely, um, especially chart. <laughs> uh, it's, it's ugly. Um, 
I prefer using a tool like Excel if I want to graph, if I want to do analysis, that kind of thing. So I export the data. So I just click export. Okay. It's a text file. If I click on this, this is going to open Notepad uh, in my setup. Okay. This is a tab delimited file. I'm not going to explain that right now. Um, you'll see that there's quotation marks around some of these items and there's not quotation marks around some other items. Kind of odd. Um, so that might confuse you. Um, you'll see not only does it have the table, but it has some of the notes that are on the bottom of the page. And I'm going to show you what I usually do to get it from this into Excel. This is not best practices. So I put the cursor in Notepad. I did Control A, which selects all of the text. Control C, which copies it. I'm going to open an empty spreadsheet. Okay, here's my empty spreadsheet. I'm in A1. Control V to paste. Ta-da! It pastes exactly the way it should. That's how I do it. And if you look, um, there's nothing in the notes column until you get to total. And everything more or less transferred the way it should. Uh, this is not always going to happen properly. This is not best practice for importing text files into Excel. I'm about to show you what you should do. Okay, you'll see it has the query date. I would not delete any of the stuff. I would keep all of the data, and this is best practice, keep all of the notes, keep everything. I, you know, usually name the tab something like raw data. Um, I'm about to show you what you're supposed to do uh, to import the data into Excel. So here you go. Um, I'm using Excel 365. This is the software as a service. Uh, the ribbon may look different depending on what version of Excel you have. Um, if you're using a different kind of spreadsheet program, they should have some kind of, it might be like in their file functionality. Oops, sorry, it's not in Excel, but we have it in the data ribbon, get data. And it, it's actually get it from a text file if you want to use that icon, but I'm just going to use the get data from file and it's going to be from text or CSV. It's not a CSV, by the, by the way. CSV is comma separated values. This is actually tab separated values because I looked. I mean, it's obviously not tab separated. I mean, obviously not comma separated because there's no commas in there. Okay, so um, I have it in my downloads. It goes straight to downloads. Here, this is my first query. I'm going to click import. Okay, so I just edited out some stupid stuff that Excel does. Um, and if you have an older version of Excel, I'm sorry, I'm trying to resize this so it stays in my recording area, but it's not playing nice. Um, if you have an older version of Excel, which many of you may, uh, it's going to look different from this. Uh, it will show you the various columns in importing, and you might want to check that it's importing each column the way it should look. Okay. Um, sometimes you, you are able to step through each of the columns to make sure that it is uh, in, importing it properly and that, you know, it's interpreting the type correctly. That is a best practice. Um, that is interpreting numerical as numerical and text as text. Uh, you don't want it to get those confused. So I'll load it. And in the current version, you'll see it has this query. It has, you know, it has this query where it's querying this text file so that if this text file changes, you can refresh that query and it will refresh the data that are in this file. Now, this is useful Notice this is my first query, and so you have to be kind of careful what you're naming your query. Um, it's giving you a data table. This has all sorts of nice functionality with Excel. That said, you might see why when I'm blogging, I usually just copy paste. And for my next step, 
<laughs> which is to make a graph. I'm going to be playing with this raw data one, not the this is my first query, um, because I don't like this total row. I'm not going, I'm not dealing with all sorts of optionality with Wonder for this introductory video. Okay. So going back to my data, I've decided I want to graph the crude rate and the age adjusted rate. I'm not interested in the confidence intervals at this point in time. We will look at that in a future video. Um, so I just want to graph the crude rate and the age adjusted rate for our period. Let's do that as a line graph. So let's insert that. So the last thing that I want to do is add some data labels. So um, instead of a legend, so we can see which curve is which, I want this to be the series name and not the value. So now we have our graph, We've got our crude rate and our age adjusted rate. Um, so crude rate, remember, is just number of deaths divided by population. It was going down and then it started going up. Um, but we see the age adjusted rate had been going down in general, though we had a couple bumps up in recent years. And once the 2020 data are in, yeah, there's going to be a big bump up in the age adjusted rate and obviously the crude rate as well. Um, it will be very, very noticeable when the 2020 data get added to CDC Wonder. Um, so why don't you try it out yourself to grab the data? Um, you know, I did the graph in Excel. You can get into the data um, very easily, uh, get the table. Um, some people, you know, don't copy paste from the table of the HTML table itself. Someone was saying, you know, just click on that little export. And yes, there's a text file. You can import into Excel a couple different ways. Um, you can actually open and Let's see if I can make it happen. Um, another way to open, and it says open workbooks. If I browse files, and we'll go back to downloads, it says all Excel files, but you can browse text files. This is my first query, just open the text file. And now it starts the old text import wizard. And it knows it's delimited. Oh, it has headers. Okay, I'm going to say it has headers because it does that first row and it's tab delimited. It detected that. Okay, I'm just going to say finish. And this is the old import and it's in its own file now. Um, there's several different ways you can open that text file the way you want it. And so now it doesn't have that weird query, you know, that weird um, data table thing going on. Okay, so that's a third way to import this. And then now I can just, you know, um, you know, copy or move this tab. So I can create a copy and move it to book one. Boom. Now this is my first query too. Now I've got it in there a second time and it's got all the notes and everything. So import the files, do it. You know, it's not that difficult. I'll be doing some more videos showing how to do um, a few simple aggregations. Uh, I think the next one I'll do is comparing male versus female mortality rates. We'll just stay in the 1999 to 2019 database to start with. And uh, in the future, I'll start pushing it back so that we can also cross over to the pre-1999 databases so that you can push it back you know, 50 years and look at even longer mortality trends. Won't that be fun? Yeah, no, okay. But you can look, it over, look over my shoulder. You can do the database calls you're interested in. You don't have to wait for me to do it. Um, I have my specific interests for mortality trends. You might have your specific interests. So it's not a difficult database to use if you know how to use it. So I'm going to show you how to use it. So watch this space. I will be putting the first few videos in Mortality with Meep. But as working with Wonder goes on, it will be its own separate playlist. And I won't have all the working with Wonder videos in uh, the Mortality with Meep playlist because I want to stick with just the Mortality trends, if I can, uh, with Mortality with Meep. Okay.
See y'all.